after a little bit of a lapse. Sorry for the lack of uploads, guys. I have been uh, on vacation for the past two weeks or so. I, I had to go to a wedding in Greece, and then we, we extended the vacation over and spent some time in Croatia. So I kind of had a two-week Euro trip, um, and before that I was, you know, catching up on work and things. So it's been a, it's been a little while since I've actually worked on the truck. But Back to it, don't have much on the agenda for the next um, next few months, so definitely back focused on this thing and gonna try to get this running and driving as, as fast as I can. Uh, in this video, I think this will be a pretty short one because I'm really just gonna focus on getting the truck uh, running. Um, just get the truck running, get the coolant bled, um, and then eventually I'll, I'll do a first drive. I don't know that I'll split those up or not, but, um, yeah, so really the, the only things I've left to finish at this point um, is the exhaust. That's really the, the big lift. Um, I have the exhaust in a state where I think I'm comfortable getting this thing running. So I've, I've kind of extended the um, headers enough that they're, you know, I can, I can let it running for a couple minutes. And I think there's pretty low risk of anything um, burning, melting, catching on fire. Um, so. But I do have the parts, I had to order a few different bends and I also ordered a muffler. So I think I have the parts left to at least finish the exhaust or V1 of the exhaust. Um, and I'll, I'll go through that and show you guys what the plan is there. Um, but yeah, main focus, get this thing started, get the exhaust done and uh, then get it on the road. So stay tuned and, and we'll jump into it. <music> Nothing on the first start. I'm just straight up getting nothing. Um, so I'm thinking either not enough power or potentially a bad ground. So I might add a jump pack and start there, see if that works. <laughs> jump pack didn't work so now I got to figure out what the heck is going on um, probably first gonna test the battery just see if that's extremely drained if that looks okay then I think I'm gonna mess around with my ground and uh, see if I can get a better ground contact and then probably try again attempt number two three whatever it is now I suspected that my ground I grounded to the head which is not ideal I was hoping it would be good enough but I was suspecting that my my main ground here was not good enough um, so I found an extra piece of ground cable from the LS and I uh, just sort of rigged it up I have connectors on each end and I rigged it into the normal ground cable this may not be perfect but I'm hoping this at least gets me a better result and then I can sort of permanently extend the ground cable to the block directly so we shall try again to start. Okay, so where we're at, don't know if the ground did anything, but that time I got a little bit of a click, which kind of made it feel like the battery is just completely drained. So we're gonna try again now to charge the battery. I do have a warranty on the battery, so worst case, I may take the battery back, try to get a brand new one, and that way at least I know I'm starting fresh. So, silly diagnosis so far, but we're getting a little bit closer. We're back. Another day, another attempt to start the Colorado. Uh, off camera, I did a bunch of testing. I, I needed a new multimeter, so I bought a better multimeter and uh, did some testing it looks like everything is okay so i'm guessing that the issue is my ignition switch what i mean by everything is okay is i tested my ground for resistance and that looks fine um tested the starter itself looks like the starter is getting 12 volts so i don't really see issues there 
So I'm thinking the issue is the same thing that other people have issues with is, is the ignition switch relearn. Um, I think you have to get it done by a dealer or I think maybe you can do it if you have like HP tuners or you know you may have a tuner that has the ability to do it. Anyway, I don't have the ability to do it right now so I'm going to try to um, jump it from the fuse box. Uh, I've seen this done at least in one YouTube video. I'm really hoping I don't screw anything up. So uh, yeah, a moment of truth. I'm gonna connect the wire to the, the correct output of the starter relay or correct pin of the starter relay. Um, and then basically just bridge it over to the battery and hope that it cranks. So big moment, hope it works. Here we go. Attempt number whatever this is. Five. It starts, yeah, baby. That was it, definitely the ignition switch issue. Ran for a second, gonna check everything. Everything looks good. I'll probably crank it back up and, and let it run for a minute, but I'm pumped. That's awesome. That is awesome. All right, in my excitement, I forgot to explain exactly what I did, but um, as I, I kind of talked about already, the ignition switch needs to be reprogrammed or something to the car. I don't really fully understand it. I know GM can do it. Um, in order to get around that, what I did was I removed the starter relay. I saw one other person do this and you put a wire into the 87, um, 87 pin. And then you basically just bridge that directly to the battery and that will start the car. Um, yeah, again, I, I'm not taking credit for this. This was. I think lots of other people probably know this trick, but I saw someone else do it uh, and it worked for me. I just checked. I don't see any leaks so far. I don't see, I was really concerned about my fuel lines. It looks like those are holding pressure. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and start it again and hope it runs for a bit longer and then just keep little by little checking things and make sure everything uh, looks good. So very excited. That was a big step. I'm happy that it started. It seemed to fire pretty quickly. Um, it's really just the ignition switch that seems to be the issue. All right, good news. Had some time to dedicate to this thing today. Was really scratching my head and doing some research. Um, all of this off camera, obviously and um, ended up basically leaving everything as is. I'm still starting via the uh, little jump wire from the fuse box, but all I did today was unplugged the MAF. Um, again, I'm using an LS3 MAF, and the truck started up and idled great. Um, no issues whatsoever. <laughs> so it's by far the best it's ran. It's the longest it, it ran. I probably let it idle for a good, uh, I don't know, minute, minute or two, um, which doesn't sound like a lot, right? But I, I'm gonna be doing this in little increments, um, just making sure I have no major leaks or, or anything else. So, ran for a couple minutes today without the MAF plugged in. Uh, not ideal scenario, right? Obviously I, I want a mass airflow sensor and need one. The truck is meant to run with one. The ECU is definitely taking readings from it. I did pull a few codes today. I pulled a code for both mass airflow and intake air temperature sensor, which makes sense because it was unplugged. Uh, those were really the only two major codes that I had stored. So I gotta figure out what the issue is. It's either I have a bad mass airflow sensor or something with the tune. Um, and the truck does not like the size of the intake I have, maybe. Um, just so everyone knows, current loads a base tune onto these things, which I think is just kind of a generic, you know, I don't know exactly what, what file they're using, but I think it's kind of a catch-all just so everyone can get their, their trucks running. And then the intent is to go, um, you're supposed to go get a real tune, which is, I'm planning on doing all that, but 
obviously I want the thing at least in a state of being able to drive before you know I can take it to a dyno and, and get it tuned um, and I do not have HP tuners and I you know I thought about going down the rabbit hole of of uh, trying to learn how to tune and doing it myself but at this point I kind of just want to get this thing running so all that being said hoping I continue to run the, I can continue to run the thing on no mass airflow sensor for the time being uh, I will probably order a replacement just to rule out if it's just a bad math like that's probably the the best uh, outcome is that I just need a new mass airflow sensor so now I gotta fight with rock auto and try to get a new one of those um, but anyway truck runs um, didn't take a video of it sorry but uh, you know I'll, obviously the next one's gonna be really focused on getting this thing running well and then getting it out on the road um, so yeah, there will be many more videos of the thing running. Before I cut this one off, I do want to show you guys what I did with the exhaust. So let me cut over to that and I'll show you guys under the truck and, and what the plan is there. Alright, so quick tour of the exhaust. It's going to be a bit difficult to see, but bought a, uh, I bought a speed engineering Y pipe. Um, the outlets from the headers, each one comes out to a 2.5 where the O2 sensors are located. So I had to buy 2.5 to 3 inch adapters, which is what you see here. Sorry for the O2 sensor wire. Clamp both these for the time being. Uh, that goes back to the first part of the, the speed engineering Y, which is 3 inch and basically goes straight back to the collector. Uh, this side, same thing here. Let me see if I can get my light. So same thing here on this side. We got the um, header collector to a two and a half to three to a 45 degree bend. I did use mild steel on the bends. Probably should have used stainless, whatever. This is V1 of the exhaust. I think it'll be fine. And then um, this goes to the other side of Sorry, my GoPro is not collaborating. This goes to the other side of the Speed Engineering Y. You can see back, and then it goes to the collector back there. So the the collector, just so everyone's aware, is a um, three and a half. So it basically goes, you know, two and a half at the collectors to three, threes back uh, to the to a three and a half, and then there'll be a three and a half back. I'll, I'll show you guys the other pieces of the exhaust that I have. But I basically bought a muffler and then it'll be kind of a muffler to a straight section to a turn down and that will be the entire exhaust it may be very loud so I may have to re add a resonator or something in but we will see for now that is the plan so it's kind of ghetto but I'm sort of proud of how I put it together without welding anything uh, it's it's gonna work at least for the time being so it's it's all clamped for right now um, but I, I may either tack it or get someone to come just weld up some of these sections for me because I really don't want to leave the whole thing clamped. Obviously, it's not good for longevity. But the idea was to get something on here just so it wasn't basically running open headers um, to start out with. So, I you know, I'm about three quarters of the way there. The rest is easy. It's just, like I said, a muffler and a straight section back. The hard part's done. Um... The one thing I do have to do, you know, I let the truck run today, but I still have these zip ties, especially the one back here, which is still holding a little bit of weight. So I got to come up with a hanger solution back here. So that will be one of the next steps is just making sure this back section is supported. Um, but yeah, this is V1 of the exhaust. I think it's going to work pretty well. And with the theme of everything else, did everything pretty cheap. Oh, by the way, while I'm under here, no leaks yet. Today was the longest I let this thing run. Um, got a little bit of heat in it, not much, but so far everything looks pretty good. As I just mentioned, here is the rest of the system. So we have this northeastern exhaust muffler. This is actually a, it's kind of hard to find one of these, but this is actually a chambered, um, you can see the chambers in there. It's a chambered straight through three and a half muffler. So this will be the lone muffler um, and then it'll go to a, a three, three and a half inch straight section and obviously this is not 
the right size. I need to get a three and a half turn down, but you can kind of picture what it's going to look like. So that will basically run from the um, Y pipe back. It's probably, I don't know, two and a half, three feet or so. I'm hoping it'll dump out, um, it should dump out like right before the rear diff, somewhere right around there. But yeah, I got to get, uh, figure out either get this clamped up for the time being or welded up and I will get this on. All right, guys. Well, that is a wrap for this one. I appreciate everyone watching. Uh, this is a short one and I know not much got done, but you know, a lot of big wins. We, we got the truck started. I have an exhaust solution. Um, and, uh, I got the truck to, to run and idle. So we're, uh, much closer to the finish line here. Now it's just going to be, um, you know, refining, right? Making, th making sure the thing uh, con <laughs> continues to run and making sure that, uh, that it drives fine. So that will all be in the next one. Um, hopefully the first voyage of this thing. And hopefully I get my uh, MAF issue figured out as well. That's, that's pretty much the big thing I need to go solve. So thank you guys for watching and uh, stay tuned. Getting very close. Here we go.